Today we remember with great love 11 blessed saints of First Church who entered eternal life in this past year. As we take time to hear their names and their stories, let us remember each one with love. Please listen carefully as you give a few minutes of your lives to salute and remember these remarkable men and women who together lived more than 997 years. Three in their mid-70s, one in his mid-80s, five in their mid to late 90s, and one over 100 years old, averaging 90 years and six months between them. They were sisters and brothers. They were spouses and beloved partners. They were mothers and fathers, grandmothers and grandfathers, aunts and uncles, and some were great grandparents too. And they were our friends, <clears throat> and each one was a beautiful and beloved child of God. They were ours, and we were theirs. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of each one of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our salvation. Amen. After I share each of the names of the, um, those that we're lifting up today, I'm going to ask for your help. I'll say the name at the end, and let's all say together, thanks be to God. Dorothy M. Horn was 99 and three quarters years old when she entered eternal life last January. Born in Akron, Ohio in 1923, Dottie spent most of her life in Upper Arlington and in later years split that time in Stewart, Florida. Graduating from the Ohio State University, and she had a shirt with the on it, in 1947, she taught at Beck Street Elementary School in German Village. She was active in community service, especially through Twig 107 for 50 years and she was one of the founding members of Buckeye Ranch in 1958, a service that she supported all the days of her life after that. She enjoyed cooking, making hand-dipped dark chocolate candy, and if you timed it right, not that I knew how to do this, if you timed it right, you could end up in her place when she was making the candy, and sometimes she'd share the ones that weren't as good. They were all really good. She was loved entertaining and traveling with family, and she was an OSU football fan with season tickets since, catch this, 1940, and she played tennis. <laughs> she was a member of First Church for more than 60 years and was actively supporting of our stewardship and our ministry and our mission every one of those years until the very end of her life. Dorothy loved her family and her First Church family for Dorothy Horn, let us say, thanks be to God. Betty Jean Cobb was 97 years old when she entered eternal life in February. Betty died peacefully at home on February 6th. Born in Milton, West Virginia, Betty's family moved to Ohio and she graduated from Worthington High School. For 35 years, she worked at Borden Dairy, where she met the love of her life, Sam. They worked together at Borden for many, many years, and I love telling the story that Sam would come here every day on his lunch day and have a sandwich because he could get away from the machinery of Borden, which was just two blocks away, and the peace and quiet of this place calmed him. Betty came sometimes as well. Since retiring, Betty enjoyed spending time with her grandchildren and great-grandchildren. She taught them all how to sew, crochet, and bake. Her famous oatmeal raisin cookies won awards. She no donated her time to Touching Little Lives and contributed over 350 Afghans for babies. She was a contributing member of our church for more than 60 years. For Betty Cobb, thanks be to God. Dr. Beth Hunker entered eternal life at 96 years and three quarters in March. Beth was an educator through and through. 
She believed that teaching was the profession that saved lives. She lived this sacred belief all her life. She taught at Columbus East High School, Columbus State Community College, Ohio State University in English and Comparative Literature, and as an adjunct associate professor in the School of Public Policy and Management before she retired in 1994. She continued to serve children as she volunteered in retirement here at First Church with the Downtown Play School Board and as a teacher of our children in Sunday School, as a charter member of Friends in Action, now known as Action for Children, as a phone friend to latchkey kids, as a member of Twig 50 in Children's Hospital, and as a docent at the Columbus Museum of Art for 15 years. Married to Henry for 64 years, Beth loved her home, her sons, and I'm grateful that her sons and family are with us today. Her family, her friends, her students, her cats and her dogs, I think we all, if you knew her, you knew she loved them all. She loved gardening and she loved reading, particularly English fiction and poetry, and she was an avid reader. You could always find a stack of books beside her reading chair in her family room. She was a world traveler and she was a cancer survivor. For Dr. Beth Hunker, thanks be to God. Glenn Roger Bardis was 84 and a half when he entered eternal life in April. Glenn was a beloved husband to Sharon for 62 years and a beloved father and grandfather. He was curious, determined, creative, and fun. He was fair-minded and honorable. He was a true gentleman. He had a passion for science, particularly nature and astronomy. Starting in childhood, his keen observation skills allowed him to notice and appreciate all of creation, the tiniest creatures, flowers, and fossils when walking in the forest. But that wasn't all. He loved the night sky. He loved the vastness of heaven as a lover of the constellations and the night, night stars. He was an entrepreneur. When personal computers were invented, Glenn took the opportunity to start his own business. In collaboration with his wife, Sharon, he created and sold educational software under the name B5 Software, and then opened one of the earliest computer stores in Columbus. Micro Center, eat your heart out. But Glenn's heart was always with his family. That's where it belonged, where he cherished spending time with them. One of his family members wrote, he was simply incredible. For Glenn Bardis, thanks be to God. For Robert Monahan, Jane, thank you for being with us today. Bob was 93 and a quarter when he entered eternal life in June. He left behind his beloved wife, Jane, and many family members and friends who loved him deeply. He was a magnificent man. He was kind. He was fun. He was funny. He was gentle. He was loving. His smile could light up a room, and if you let it, it would light up your life. He was an engineer by profession, but his love of nature and humanity guided his daily walk. He was always up for anything and loved traveling. He was inquisitive and open to anything new and challenging, no matter what it presented to him. His family and Jane were his most precious gifts. Truly, Bob and Jane were deeply and genuinely in love with one another. Jane. You told me he was the best man I ever knew. Nothing more needs to be said, but let me finish. Bob was always special, and he was a special blend, a unique blend of Christian doubter, questioner, and believer all at once. He found a way to put all of that together. Our last words to each other were, I love you, and we sealed them with a kiss. I will forever miss Bob. For Bob Monahan, thanks be to God. Joanne K. Morris had just turned 98 when she entered eternal life in August. She was born in Pittsburgh, PA in July 1925. You know, when I say these dates, you know, 1925, that's a long time ago, my friends, long time ago. Although she passed peacefully at home with her son and family 
by her side on Bainbridge Island in Washington, she was a Columbus resident until she moved in 19, uh, 2016. Here at First Church, she was active in women's fellowship, the Prediola Shop, the Mission Commission, bread, book studies, and always passionate and supportive of all the missions of this church, Sunday by Sunday. She was well-read. She was always compassionate and kind. With others, I share memories of Joanne's quiet and steady voice and her presence. Her mind, her spirit, her daily actions were always focused on others. For those in central Ohio who have missed her here, we await her return to be buried beside Ben in Greenlawn Cemetery. For Joanne Morris, thanks be to God. Jenkins Smith was 75 and three quarters year old when he entered eternal life in September. He was a member of our church for four years and was a beloved and much missed member of our staff from June 2022 until his death working as our weekend custodian. But those who only saw him at church would know that he sat with Larry and Jan, changed his outfit from early morning to worship with us each Sunday. But he worshiped with us long before he was on the staff. Born in Birmingham, Alabama, Jenkins and his family escaped the hatred that they experienced in the Deep South and came to Cleveland, Ohio. There he was a state championship basketball player at East Tech High School in Cleveland and went on to serve in the United States Navy as a Vietnam veteran. <laughs> he, he served as a, in the Vietnam War. He was a boxer. He was an all-around great athlete, playing professional baseball at one point, but training boxers throughout the years. He had an associate's degree at Columbus State Community College earned in these last few years and I want everyone here to think about this. He didn't quit learning. He didn't stop until he had that degree at 75 years old. That's powerful. But for all of us who knew him, all of us who knew him, we knew his electric smile, his loving presence, his wise and kind words, what I would call the Jenkins way, truth spoken with love that guided him every step of the way. For Jenkins Smith, thanks be to God. Betsy T. Zahn had just turned 98 years old when she entered eternal life one month ago today, October 5th. She was an actress, a stewardess, and an early TV personality in central Ohio. Along with John, she was an active member of First Church since April 1955. At church, she was active with our youth group, with our Sunday school teaching, she served as commissioner of education, with refugee resettlement, with the women's fellowship, as a deacon and as a Stephen minister in the 1990s, and attended most of the early bread meetings. She was also very active in conducting tours all over the world, and is remembered by many of our members as leading tours with church members traveling along. There's something I need to say about her interest in flight. I love this story. She was flying in the late 40s on a, on a trip that would go back and forth from Chicago to Denver. And these combat pilots didn't care what the weather was in Denver or Chicago when they took off or landed. They'd go through anything and land their planes, right? They could do it all. But she, she, one, one flight, someone was looking out the window and said, the wing's on fire. To which Betsy said, no, it's not the wing that's on fire, it's the engine. They said, oh, because as you remember, all the engines used to fire up. They literally would burn. So Betsy was funny that way. She was a global citizen. She was loving, out, outgoing, I was gonna say outrageous, <laughs> curious, brilliant, insightful in all things, and deeply devoted as a practicing person of faith. She was fun and funny, and she was always a great person to be around. We will remember her tomorrow morning here in a celebration of life at 11 a.m., followed by a reception and then a trip to Mount Sterling, Ohio, where she will be buried next to John, her beloved husband of 63 years. For Betsy Zahn, thanks be to God. Pat Grosick was a few weeks short of 77 years old when she entered eternal life on October 9th. The daughter of Ukrainian immigrants, 
Pat moved to Columbus in the early 1970s and became the assistant press secretary for Governor Gilligan. That launched a career in journalism, communications, fundraising, marketing, and development. As you see, she had a wide grasp of things. She was a brilliant leader in any area she touched. She was clear to always say, I am a progressive Democrat, and was proud to work for policies in Ohio that made this place better for children and everyone else who suffered in any way. Pat loved people, and people loved Pat. She was a member of First Church for nine years and was active in worship until she could no longer be with us because of mounting health concerns. However, she came to worship one last time on Legacy Sunday at the end of September and was overjoyed to be with us, celebrating our life together and our long-lasting commitment to social justice. She was a beam of light in God's world. We will celebrate her on Sunday, November 12th, at First Church with wine and cheese to follow. For Pat Grosick, thanks be to God. Rick Henderson was almost 78 years old when he entered eternal life on October 20th. When you greeted Rick and when you asked how he was, there was always one response. You know what it was? Say it with me. Sensational. <laughs> That's what he said. He always had a kind word for everyone, an open heart, a powerfully positive demeanor and a faithful and loving attitude toward everyone. He survived a near-death crash as a teenager, and when he rose from the bed, coming out of the hospital after months of rehabilitation, he said, I will serve Christ with the life I've been given back, and he did. For years and years, Rick and Lourdes were regular worshipers at 9 a.m., he would stay, though, for the 11 a.m. service and still help as an usher and a deacon, however he could help. And when he was asked to serve as the trustees, he said, I don't know anything about endowments, but I'll do it. And he served with joy, becoming the chairperson of trustees. He did it with a, a spirit of delight at each meeting. On church council, he brought that same great sense of humor and delight as he served with a joyful heart. With a joyous spirit, a strong handshake, a smile that could melt anyone's heart, his compassionate and friendly way, his deep faith, Rick Henderson was sensational. For Rick Henderson, thanks be to God. And finally, our matriarch, Lola Davis Edwards, who was 100 years and three quarters when she entered eternal life 12 days ago. Lola, or Zimmy, as her family and friends called her, was a pure beam of light. If you could capture light in a human form, it would be Lola. She shined. Sunshine didn't define her. She was bigger than sunshine. What, you could, what can you say about a mother of nine, a grandmother of 26, and a great-grandmother of 35? Three pounds at birth on February 24th, 1923, Lola was placed in a shoebox and placed by the radiator in her family's home to keep her warm through the winter. This feisty little survivor grew to be a busy and active child and a feisty lady. A surgical nurse in Paris, landing in Paris on December 25, 1945, to serve the troops that were behind and, and the citizens who were wounded in the war, Lola served in surgery there for a year before returning to Columbus, meeting Mel, falling in love, getting married, having nine children, and raising them here at First Church. Here she served as one of the first female deacons, I think the first, actually, a member of the House and Grounds Commission, and with two friends started the Prediola Shop, which sold fair trade goods that operated for 30 years, from the late 60s to 1999. She enjoyed sewing, making clothes, and other items, including Hold your breath, all of the costumes for the annual Christmas pageant that we celebrate every year. Those were made by Lola Edwards. I don't think her name's on any of them. She sewed the communion cloth we have on the table today, and for years fixed the communion elements by herself, and then when she was done, handed that job over to Fran. <laughs> so last year she was named Lay Leader Award Winner of the Year, an honor she shared with Jackie Dean, and one that made her extraordinarily happy. Lola loved art, 
who is an avid reader. She taught her children to appreciate learning no matter what the subject and to do their best no matter what the job. And she taught their, their children as well to respect the dignity of every single person for who they are, not by their race, religion, sexual orientation, or any other social standing. She did this raising her children in the 1950s and 60s. Zimmy was devoted to her family and they returned that devotion. She will be remembered here in a service of celebration for her life on Saturday, November 18th at 2 p.m. I invite you to come and celebrate our matriarch. For Lola Davis Edwards, thanks be to God. This morning, in case you didn't feel it or see it, our loved ones stopped by here just to check up on us, see how we're doing. They want to see if we're okay. They wanted to make sure our hearts were all right, that our love was in order. Now they're with the angels in glory. They are at peace with their loved ones, their families and friendship circles who have gone before us. They are now our ancestors. They are now our angels in glory. And they will guide our steps for generations to come. May we carry their spirit every single day, their inspiration of thought and kindness, their love of children and care for the poor, their championship of peace and justice, their generosity and prayerfulness, their active life in the world, always making the world a better place. They are blessing us today. May their memories always be for us a true and lasting blessing. For the blessed saints, let us all say together, thanks be to God. Amen.